So, afternoon guys. So, uh, I put a couple of teaser pictures up of my, if you clicked on the video, you know what it is, Boca Mini Tracker. <clears throat> I put a couple of teaser pictures up on my Instagram for a laugh. Because quite a few of my followers on Instagram are into tracker knives. We're a bit of an eclectic, crazy bunch. And um, I have some people saying, oh, well, can you do a little video on it so we can sort of get a feel for what it looks like and everything. And I looked, there's not a single video on YouTube. So this, as of now, and I put this up today, well, tonight when I get home from work, I'm at work. So um, this will be the first video on this knife on YouTube, I think. Which either means I'm really quick on and off the mark, or it's a knife no one's bloody interested in. But anyway, off we go. So before we get into the um, Boca Mini Tracker, we just need to back pedal slightly. We need to go back pedal with this knife. Now those of you that know, this is the Tom Brown Tracker. Kind of the knife that started it all. Um, it's a very controversial knife. It's a very sort of like, well, as we say in the UK here, it's a Marmite knife, you either love it or you hate it. Um, now, it's controversial anyway because this wasn't the first one. People seem to think this is the first one. The actual one, I'm pretty sure it was done by a guy named Dave Beck. And I think I'm right in saying that his one is a little closer, or a lot closer, depending on your opinion, to Tom Brown's initial con um, concept. Tom Brown himself is a controversial figure. He's written some books that I personally quite enjoy if you take them and just read them. Um, some people have taken them almost like a like a, um, a, woods, a woodscraft, outdoors bible, um, as some people have with Ray Mears and things like that. But anyway, the first commercial one you could buy was this one. You could buy the other one, but it was in limited quantities and it was bloody expensive. This is bloody expensive. Okay, so First seen in the film The Hunted, uh, Tommy Lee Jones, do, 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 fighty, 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 um, et cetera, et cetera. It is, I don't know, my mate um, Nathan Macefield, uh, Mayfield over in the States is a bit of an authority on these. And he describes it as a cross between a knife, knife, and a crafting hatchet. By crafting hatchet, he means like a carving hatchet. And certainly if you see the projects he does with his, amazing. In fact, he, he knows far more about this than me. I mean, I'm going to be just saying a few things about this one in context of this one. So, the concept is, it's heavy. This is bloody heavy. Top's also, this is the T1. Cops also bought out a couple of, couple of three other sizes, I think. There's a tiny one, which my mate uh, Sam Gravestock really loves. And then there's uh, two in the middle between this and the tiny one, I believe. This one from Boca is nearer to the other sizes. This one's bigger. It's a hell of a chunk of high carbon 1095, high carbon steel. High, um, 1095 is an old fashioned knife, but um, arguably it's as good as you need. You know, it's tough, it's easy to sharpen, and also it, it's pretty strong. It's pretty strong and resilient to like prying and prying. And that brings us to one of the other things. This isn't just a knife, you can dig with this, I've dug fire pits with this one. You can see this one has been pretty loved on. Also, you can see I stripped off the black coating. If we get close enough, you can see Tom Brown's logo on there. This is made by Tops. Okay, um, I've done everything with this. I've took this multiple countries abroad, North Africa, a few other places. The theory being this bit, actually I'll still put sharp. Uh, you can chop. You can't chop a tree down with this. Well, you could if you're built like a brick shit house. That ain't me. Um, but, you know, you can chop firewood, kindling, that kind of thing. Uh, there's a saw on the back, but in my opinion, it, like all saw backs, it's not really any saw. What it is really good for is cutting notches. The, I can make temp pegs and temp stakes with this knife faster than any other one I've done. Bang, bang, chopped. Bang, bang, sharpened. Turn it over. Notch in. We're ready to go. Um, so that's the theory is this portion is good for chopping this portion is good for um, You find the tasks like whittling Sharpening sticks that kind of thing um, Carving feather sticks, but traditionally where with a Scandinavian knife or a regular bushcraft knife you would take your wood thus and you would Move down to carve your feather sticks. 
this one with this they call it the half moon or this one is always i always think it's more of a quarter moon you hold the wood you place it on and you drag it up yes there's a slight safety issue in that you slip you're going to cut yourself okay two things one practice until you don't do that two if you're not comfortable with it don't do it don't pop on here saying it's a really really dangerous technique because i do it or whatever is if you don't not comfortable with it don't do it it's fine Personally, I'm always believed cut towards your thumb, not towards your chum. Yeah, but obviously we're all adults here. Just do what you feel comfortable with. So this is the Tom Brown one. It's pretty big. OK, I'm going to bring it in and out to reference this one. So let's go on to the meat of the video. Boca. Now, the, other, the thing about it is I've already said about, as I say, bring this in and out. This is bloody expensive. They are expensive. This is over 200 pounds. In the UK to an, over $200 in the States but I think you get a chunk for your money okay this one is a fraction of that price it's a lot smaller it's not as heavy but this one in the UK is like 60 something pounds so I'm gonna go with about $60 70 between 60 and 70 dollars in the States so it comes I'm amazed it comes in a great box it's magnetized open it up now that was in that but I've already got it out because I couldn't resist it comes with uh, don't eat this and don't eat, let the kids eat it comes with paperwork I'm a man we don't look at those do we okay it comes with a kydex sheet and apparently it is kydex I did some checking I emailed Boca and they emailed me back from Germany it is kydex it's not the heaviest kydex this is actually quite a good kydex on the top one Duke twine on all my sheets will be on this one okay so it comes with a kydex sheet which is nice, multiple lashing points, so you can tie it to your pack, and also you can bolt on your belt loop. Comes with the belt, and I'm pretty sure you can belt it conventionally, da da, or yeah, scout style. If you like it smaller, you're back for that that whole kind of like I don't know tactical kind of thing. Okay. I mean, I think an awful lot of people that buy this knife will also invest a few quid in having a leather sheet made for it because it's a bit more in thinking with um, perhaps the bushcraft thing. Personally, I'll just put a load of jute twine like this, this and I'll be happy. Let's get that out of the way. Here we go. And we don't ever need that again. So, here we have it. We'll get this one for reference too. You can see it is a lot smaller I'll get the tape and do some measuring for you in a minute it's a lot smaller okay it's more the size of a normal bushcraft knife this one is more like um, this is bigger this is obviously used for some chopping this is front weight so you could do some chopping but um, yeah all in all it's a more nimble knife right I'll get a, a, a tape measure and we'll go through what it is okay so the blade is 13.5 centimeters that's five and a quarter for you guys on the other side of the pond um, the cutting edge is actually about 12 and a half centimeters so just done just shy of five inches for you guys on the pond the handle is 12 centimeters uh, four and three quarters in inches and she is what is she let's do it from the 10 centimeter mark She's five centimetres thick, so a touch under a quarter of an inch. So, you know, once again, same as this, 1095 high carbon steel, uh, which is a classic steel for a bushcraft knife. I think it's really good. First things up, we'll talk about the design and who designed it um, in a minute. First up, I have big hands. I mean, I've got proper hands, murderer's hands. These are murderer's hands. I haven't actually used them for that function, but they could do it fairly functionally. So... And I can get a good grip on there. This bit here, I am, I'm onto the blade. I'm slightly off the handle, but I'm onto that. If you've got a medium not hand, it will be super comfortable. If you've got a big hand, I mean, if you've got a massive hand, if you're like a six foot four tradie, this thing is going to be okay for you. The only way you really know is to get one and try it. But I think you'll be okay. Yeah. The blade is... An interpretation of this one in that we here we have to get into a bit more 
who designed it. The guy that designed this knife is a guy named Dave uh, Dave Wenger. He's yeah, he's a knife designer who decided to come up with his own version of the tracker knife. Um, it had the same kind of like features, but he made he put his own stamp on it. I mean, you can see the difference in this one and this one is pretty different. And also, um, this one arguably this part is a bit nearer the original Beck one. Okay. Now Dave does his own custom knife. He makes amazing knives. He's been on my list of knives to buy when I win the lottery or get away with robbing a bank for ages. So when I saw that he had done this collaboration with Boca to make a more affordable version, I was all over it, honestly. I was all over it like a barbecue. So Dave bought his sort of like take on the tracker knife with it. All, if you go and do a search on Dave's knives, you'll see they all tend to have Makata handles. Um, he does more conventional shape knives as well. Makata handles and black blades. He provides quite a few for um, like special forces unit, units in the states and military guys. So the black, the black tap blade is quite, you know, in and tactical. Um, although I've been out of the army for years, so I don't need that. So what I will probably do on this one is I will probably strip the blade like I did on this one. Two reasons: one, I think that the coating slightly impedes cutting. I mean, is it serious? No, not enough to worry about. But I just actually just don't like the look. That's me. If you like the look, you know, good on you. Just go with it. You do you, bro. You do you, as the kids on the street say. So I'll probably strip it. So we'll do similarities and we'll do differences. Similarity. Obviously, it's got a rounded converse, uh, convex bit. It's got... This is a quarter moon. The original had more of a half moon. And in a lot of ways, this is way more faithful to that. I mean, that is a heck of a half moon. And this is your more fine cutting area. Um, it I feels like it's very slightly hollow ground into a flat grind. Hard to tell with all the coating on. Once I get that off, I can tell. And this feels like it's slightly convex into a flat ground. Whereas this one, I mean, I've modified this one. Every, and that's the other thing. Most people that buy these and get into them tend to sort of like run the tend to convex this bit a bit more so it's a bit tougher for chopping so so basically just to introduce you to it this is the Dave Wenger collaboration with Boca it's perhaps slightly more authentic to the original Dave Beck design um, but that can be debated the main things similar are both have a have a section for slicing, a section for chopping. Now this one is a beast of a chopper. I mean, that's just physics. It weighs more and I, it, this, thing will, this thing will chop for days. This, yeah, you, if you hold, especially if you do it in a kind of pinch grip, you could chop with this more than you could chop with a normal bushcraft knife, that's for sure. You've got, a, like I've got, I've got some Hellies and Moras and I've got a uh, Raymes Woodlaw. I mean, that, those are, cutting machines they are not made for chopping this yeah you could chop with this you could chop this lightly but yes so that bit there definitely it is front weighted 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 as you can see it's actually got a very slight half moon shape it's actually going downhill this one's slightly uphill i would say which has a very slight cookery feel to it if you've got a cookery or if you're into cookeries you'll get what i'm saying it's got that slight yes it's got the cut out here. That's useful. I mean, you can get your thumb in there. It's very comfortable for your power cutting, etc. It's quite comfortable in the reverse grip if you're doing chest cutting. It's got the half moon, which I is, and I've got to say, this is wicked sharp. Wicked sharp. I don't think I have any problem with this doing feather sticks and things. And I look forward to uh, modding it, which will not be too much. I'll just strip the blade off um, in the process I'll probably the handles will probably get really mucky so I'll probably just dye those black so they show up the muck less and I probably end up just convexing that just because when I sharpen that that's the way I'll do it um, resharpening these are not the easiest things in the world to sharpen as you can imagine easiest thing of course is just a scandy knife down and cutting along the bevel next would be I don't know flat grind I would have thought 
but they're not they're not impossible to do they're not that difficult to do you don't have to buy any sort of expensive sharpening systems or anything like that I, th I mean I sharpen mine freehand um, this bit I do with an axe puck this bit I just do with ceramic rods of various grits or I have just th the other thing if you don't have ceramic rods this one I've sharpened loads of times just by getting a um, broom handle covering it in various grits of sandpaper and using it use pencil and doing it like thus and that way you get the half moon too then turn it this way pay a little bit more attention to the half moon and this bit just get your axe puck and away you go or you can just get a flat stone and away you go so I'll recap slightly because most people just want a basic thing about this knife uh, designed by Dave Wenger as a collab with Boca, Boca Knives well Boca Plus um, it's the Boca Plus line so um, I should point that out 1095 high carbon steel um, fits nicely in the hand Makata um, it's a good size for all round bushcraft it's not too big to actually carry on your belt this one I don't carry on my belt I either strap it on my pack or just put it in a pocket on my pack I mean when I'm carrying this one if I just need to cut a piece of string or something I don't use this I mean no matter what knife I carry I mean I always have a pen knife on me what we've got today this is my Spyderco lightweight that I swapped a Rex 45 blade into so um, even if you're carrying a normal side bushcraft knife most of the outdoors guys I know will pack a backup knife or something a bit more slicey for food prep or something yeah great knife by the way Spyderco lightweight cheap really good and that pocket clip one of the best they do but we're not talking about that one today although I've got a video about how we put this one together if you're interested just go into my channel and look up uh, Spyderco Power 3 lightweight blade swap so do I like this knife well I haven't used this knife but I like the way it feels I love the design on it and the shape on it I don't feel bad that they've lost the um, saw back because I don't use it um, when I strip it, I will square that, and I think that will be perfect for a ferro rod. It's already pretty tight, but it just needs squaring a bit more. It feels like I could just chop some small wood, you know, or chop in small bits to make a shelter. Um, yeah, it feels like I could put baton with it. Um, just to let you know, I will be doing one night this week, I will be doing a video on batoning with this knife, and I will be doing a video on the half moon fe technique for feather sticking not that I'm as good as Nathan, Nathan on that but we'll give it a go um, and I will either link them in the down below or when you see this it will put they'll probably just pop up in the sidebar so by next weekend it's Sunday today I should have done both those things I want to try and get done um, I might do a video on how I strip the blade because I'm always asked about how to strip the blade and I always um, say to people go on my channel when I've got a uh, video on how I stripped off uh, my SE6 and how I did my SE5 etc this coating feels very like the SE6 um, and then the tops knives it feels a bit like that. about halfway between the two the tops knives ones is very aggressive the um, SE one's less so but it's, I don't tend to like them. I mean, if I can't bother to strip it, I should just let it wear off. But I'll probably strip it. And if I do, I might make a video of that one. Or I'll just refer you down to how to strip a blade. But it might be fun. So, that is the Boca Plus Mini Tracker. It's funny calling it a Mini Tracker. It's about the same size as most people's normal knife. Uh, but next to this one, it's the Mini Tracker. Okay. It's the Boca plus mini tracker Dave Wenger collaboration 1095 high carbon steel micarta handle uh, 5mm thick it's a nice robust knife if I was lost in the woods with this knife then that's theoretical that never really happens I'm on a plane that was crashed into the jungle forest tundra whatever I wouldn't feel naked with this knife I would feel pretty confident in the materials chosen and how they've been put together um, after I've done uh, a couple of tasks with it like I say I'm gonna I'll tell you what I'll probably do I'll probably do a video on a one stick fire because that uses all the techniques yeah so far I'm really happy with it
haven't tried it. Haven't tried it in the clicky Kydex, have we? Oh, oh, that's silent. So if you wanted this to be tactical and not give your position away to whoever you're sneaking up on, that that's impressive. That's oh, I've got much more expensive knives, and the Kydex is way noisier than that. That's pretty good. The fit, oh, nice. It's not coming out, but it's just got a nice push away. Oh, that's, yeah. <laughs> Jason went, oh, that's nice. That's how sad I am. Kydex gets me going. Right, so, that's it in the sheath. It's a fairly nice compact package. Certainly if you're popping it in the side pocket on a um, rucksack, be gone. Um, with that clip, you could even pop it on your strap on your backpack. That would be quite a nice place for it. Or along your belt strap on your backpack. Yeah. So, hope that answers to what people have been asking me about this knife. Um, I also want to say, got this one from Henny Haynes. They had one. They had one, and now it's out of stock everywhere. Um, I, I'm not so sure that this wasn't the only one anyone ever got in the UK. But they had one, and I've got it. Um, I, I ordered it five o'clock Friday night. And the postman gave it me at one minute past nine Saturday morning. So um, if you don't think that's a bloody good service, in the comments, put what you think is good service. Okay. So to Richard, Nick and the guys at Henny, thanks for that. That was really good because they knew I wanted to uh, put some pictures up on Instagram because I have got always asked about people that want a lighter, a more budget friendly alternative to this. And... So now there's only just been the Chinese versions of this and they're pretty crap steel and yes they're cheap and but for the price I think this one might be a viable one obviously I want to you know do some things with it and see what you think but I think this could be a viable alternative especially for people on a budget or who just don't want a big old knife like this they want something a bit a touch more discreet it's not that discreet but yeah so I hope that's helped some people um, any questions you've got about this um, just pop them in the, the uh, comments section. God, sorry, guys. I've been working all day, Sunday. Um, and, yeah. So I'll just pop it out here so you get some peep, a bit more of a view of it. So I must say, this is nice little machined out here. And the handle's lovely. It's really nicely done. So, yeah. If you're in the market with this type of knife... If you're the sort of person who thinks you might like it, then this might be a good one for you. If you're the sort of person that doesn't like this, you're going to hate this. Really. You're going to hate it. Um, it's not at all for everyone. There's a certain personality that likes it. Um, and I don't know. I don't want to say there's a certain sort of person that gets this knife. Some people don't get it. You know, it's a bit, it's, it's a bit like red-headed women. I love them, but they're not for everyone. You know? <laughs> expecting some flack from Jessica my red-headed daughter okay so thanks guys take care bye bye